Hey, what's up, my dokus? Jason here with you back to more Xenoblade Chronicles Future Connected. Last time, we began our journey here on the Bionis shoulder. We crash landed over there because of a laser looking thing that kind of blasted out of Alchemoth and, you know, hit our vessel and caused us to drop down. We also found Kino and Nene who are in trouble. We helped them and we heard their story of how they stowed away on the junks. And with that, we also, you know, had them join our party. This is actually a very exclusive thing to um, Future Connected. Usually you, or actually, I guess it wouldn't be, or no, no, I think it is. Because I think I remember four player. But yeah, the reserve actually is active and has an active, um, an active little screenshot or an active like little bar here. You know, like the things you see in Kingdom Hearts three and this game and Final Fantasy seven remake and all that. Yeah, like this little box that you can see their app, their little character doing. That doesn't happen in the main game. The main game they become uh, images. Kind of strange, but I really like it. I like it's a nice touch to make the games feel different. To go over, I guess, their stats, um, they kind of start with Sprout, or, uh, Kino starts with Sprout, uh, equipment, and he also has the Husk Shooter. is an ether rifle made from a gun berry designed to store and release ether energy. Yeah. That's interesting, isn't it? He's got a... Literally a rifle made out of a berry that Sharla probably made for him. But yeah, he's basically our ether, gonna be our ether user. Outside of Melia. Like, he's basically gonna be our Sharla. As for, um, as for Nene, she's got the keepsake equipment. And she's got the friend shelter. Shelter. -er. Is the garter's thoughtful design is inspired by a popular Nopon soft toy. Which is... Kind of also interesting, but yeah, she's basically our Rhine, so we got Shulk, Sh Melia, Sharla, and Rhine. But yeah, this time we're gonna be pressing on into the world of the Bionis shoulder, looking, seeing a few enemies. We're not gonna fight any of them really, or I guess, well, actually, let's go ahead and fight them because I actually want to show off Kino and Nene's arts as. Their arts are actually very interesting. So, if we go ahead and... Where, where's the battle? Oh, there it is. We have Magna Ansel. But as you can see here, we have Crackle Bullet, which is a two-hit combo, critical against flying monsters. We have an Idle Blast, which is an attack that flicks Break, which is like Metal Blast. We have Younger... Yogurt Stance, which is reduce aggro. Actions do not generate aggro. If carry per carry per round, grants debuff immunity. Heal round round around, you know, granting HP to all party members. We have health heal kaboom, greatly restores one person's HP. Healing bullet. Oops, I did not mean to do that. And I have to start all the way back from the junks. And I'm sure you're seeing on the map that there's that little smiley face thing. We'll go over what that is later because it's actually something really cool and unique and it actually makes me think of Xenoblade Chronicles 2 and I think that's what they got it from. Okay, so the last thing I want to show, or I guess the Healy Bullet restores HP to one party member. Finally, Doze Off is reduce the talent gauge buildup. So yeah, the good thing about, um, the good thing about, uh, Kino's, like, talent art is that it's not like, it looks kind of like, uh, it looks kind of like, um, Charla's, uh, cool-off art. 
talent art, but it's not because you know Kino's using ether energy to write berry rather than actual rifle that needs cooling off. All right, so next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go and bring Nene out because Nene has a lot of other arts too. Obviously, these arts are all similar, very similar to the ones that Ryan and Sharla have. They're just under different names. So, first off, oh, I guess we have Sword Drive. This one, plain and simple, is Ryan's. Oh no, all of these are like basically copying of Ryan's. We have Lariat, we have Feather Swing, which is War Swing, we have Hammer Beat, which you obviously know. Um, we have Mile Down, which is Wild Down, we have Shield Cur Cur Smash, which is Shield Bash, and we have Hangry, which is Rage, and then we have Oro Toast, which is Aura Burst. And then for her talent art, she has Glant, Glad Taunt, which is like Ryan's taunting talent art, which, you know, just reduces the aggro on other players and causes more a higher aggro to come out of us. So we're going to go and switch our party back to how it was before, and we're going to go ahead and keep going. Alright, we have the Navir Highlands. Oh, it's fine. If you want to fight us so bad, sure. I'll defeat you anyway. And of course, the other one has to come in. Alright, we have a landmark, we have another crossroads. I actually decided to run away from that fight because we were just not doing so hot. And I hate, I need to turn, we need to turn the time back to daytime because I prefer it in the daytime because we need to act like we haven't spent all night fighting. But yes, um... Uh, trying to think of what I wanted to do here. Because obviously we need to head in the direction of that uh, little alcove like that giant tower over there and I'm just trying to find things but actually go ahead and come in here yes I think I talked about this last episode but if I didn't body on his shoulder has its own collectopedia we have 20 items we need to find thankfully by on his shoulder and Alchemoth are the only two places that have collectopedias so once we get to Alchemoth, we'll be able to see that. So thankfully, there are only two Collectopedias to be had in this, uh, in this adventure. So we thankfully don't have to stress over all that. But we still need to collect items. That looks like a red item orb, and I'm going to actually avoid that because I feel like we're going to have to go get that anyway for a side quest or something. So we're just going to go ahead and collect some item orbs. Stay out of the way of the Antals. Which you actually will recognize that a lot of these enemies, they reused assets from Xenoblade Chronicles, like the main game. There are a lot of enemies on here that are just kind of migrated. I think it's when the Bionis kind of, you know, dissipated. A lot of the monsters from the areas in the game migrated to the Bionis shoulder. That's my personal belief. But, looks like there's people around here. Let's go ahead and interact with them. At the Companion's Cape. Many, many bird people here. Are there really only high end here living here? Oh, there, strangers. I see. You've had a rough time of it. However, I suggest you steer clear of Alkamov. Even if you do somehow get there in one piece, don't expect the transporters to be running. Oh? Why's that? The thing that shot at you was no defense platform. It was a monster we've taken to calling the Fog King. The Fog King? 
Yeah. Suddenly showed up in Alchemoth a few months back. From what I gather, you're from the Imperial Guard. Are the swords you carry just for show? Taking a sword to it is folly. It laughs at our attacks. It's like hacking at smoke. Blows pass clean through it. Must be ghost! Ghost not shoot beams, dum-dum. So that's why you call it the Fog King. We fought in defense of our home. We were ready to die, and many of us did. But in the end, it won us nothing at all. The Fog King's attacks tore into us hard. Eventually, we gathered the Hyentia and anyone else we found, and gave up the capital, so that we might live. How awful. My grieving heart belongs there. Our heartland, our capital. <sighs> Yet I cannot even mourn it. <sighs> Maxis. Huh? Yes? Please, you have to tell us how to get inside. Shulk, be serious. Boy, are you hard of hearing? I heard you. Then you should know better. No matter the situation, we have to go. If I fix the junks, we can all leave this place. Then, once we're in Colony 9, we can make plans to retake Alchemoth. No point. Why not? Shulk, do you think we took all that lying down? Huh? We're not stupid, you know. We did all we could. It's true. I want to go home, but that's a dream that won't come to pass, and it already costs too many lives. <sighs> Maxis. I understand where you're coming from. Still, I have to be blunt with you. Let it go. Now what? Judging from the speech, I can't see us convincing him. So this means we're stuck here? Quite a predicament, Empress Melia. Who are you? How do you know my name? I humbly beg your pardon. Gelgar, at your majesty's service. Formerly of the Personal Protection Division of the Alchemoth Guard Regiment. Is that so? Then the pardon is mine to beg, Sir Gelgar. And please, dispense with the Majesty. Perish the thought, Your Majesty. The recent war has rid us of the wicked purebloods. A new age dawns, and we half-breeds are chosen for its caretakers. With you, Lady Melia, as our shining paragon, I cannot but address you as Majesty. Hmm. I have no patience for wheedling. Especially from knaves who spit on their ancestors. I would never dream of doing such. I merely spoke plain truth, no more. As you wish. But the Majesty address is burdensome to me. If you absolutely insist. Until you deign to acquiesce, Lady Melia will have to suffice. So kind, Sir Gelgar. Make no mention of it, Lady Melia. Sir Gelgar, we really need to get to Alchemoth, no matter what. Ah, yes. I have heard your exchange with Maxis. Hindering the Empress's triumph. A narrow-minded fool, if ever there was one. <laughs> to begin the authentication process, one must raise their hand to the transporter. 
The device is configured in such a way that only some of the Hyentia in this land and the Imperial family may pass. Hence, Lady Melia should not have the slightest issue activating it. A similar mechanism to the tombs, then. That's our ticket into Alchemoth. Yes. Tasty news! Friend Galgor is good friend! Kind thanks, Birdmister. Not at all. I am but a humble servant in Lady Melia's employ. If it not displease my ladyship too grossly, may I offer you my companionship on your journey? I have a modicum of skill with the blade. Please rest assured. I appreciate the offer, but must refuse. We do not lack for strength. Indeed. A great shame. Should the need arise, I shall remain ready to serve. Certainly. By the way, Sir Galgar, this outpost appears to consist of naught but soldiers. Where might all the other refugees reside? They dwell beyond the Grandel ramparts, which lie below this point. They live at a remove from you, then? Yes, because of the machina who live there. What do you mean? Might you have forgotten? When the war broke out, it was the Machina's treachery that lit the fuse. Were it not for them, we needn't have lost our brethren and our home. You couldn't stand the Machina and thus moved away? Precisely. But the war is concluded, Sir Gelgar. Some simply cannot let go so easily. Melia, shall we go see for ourselves? Ah, yes. Very well. Sir Gilgar, we will take our leave of you now. Do please take care of yourselves. You'll find passage to the capital through the Cragmore Caverns. Sir Gelgar, thanks for this. See you friend later. Please to be extra careful of self. The same to you all. Interacting with people. Visiting the shops, you can buy weapons and armor in the shops to help your journey go smoother. In this chapter of your adventure, you will not find armor among the spoils for defeating monsters, but you may find weapons that differ from what shops have to offer. Accepting quests. There's no lack of people having problems on the Bionis shoulder. Through the completing the quests they give you, you'll obtain rewards such as money and equipment and new color variations, suitable for use as cosmetics. Very interesting. All right. Well, we have our destination. We got to head this way on our way to Alchemoth. However, before we do that, I think we're going to stick around Cap Companion Cape a little bit. And we're going to go ahead and get into some side questing. Because side quests are kind of a little different in Future Connected. So first off, we have a side quest that literally starts off with, Whatever shall I do? And the good thing about this is that, to my knowledge, unless I'm told otherwise, because I actually, like, I actually literally wrote down on my notes, you know, who comments and quests in the previous game, no commenters are made on the, these quests. Hey. Hello there. How would you feel about assisting me in my research? Come now, don't make those faces. It's an easy task. I swear. I'll take the grimace as a happily ma'am, shall I? See, I've developed this tool for exploiting ether deposits, a common ether pick, if you will, and I'd like you to test it out. Hmm, you're still looking uncertain? Stru struck dumb by my apparent genius. Oh, of course, you're used to being able to mine ether deposits on the Bionis with run-of-the-mill tools, aren't you? Well, that won't work here on the Bionis shoulder. The deposits are too dense, so they need a specialized implement, in, i.e. this. 
previous iterations of the ether pick were pretty heavily heavy machinery though required training and license to operate so to cut through the rigmarole i looked into developing one that can even lay people like you could that even lay people like you could use right off the bat if you prove me right i'll even let you keep it when you're done so how about it we have ether exploitation we have to ev excavate an ether deposit using the common ether pick Oh, you'll do it? Well, that's just grand. See, I made the thing, thing, so it wouldn't, you wouldn't mean anything if it wouldn't mean anything if I only tested it myself. Thanks. I used to have an assistant help me, but they seemed dissatisfied for some reason and ran off before I knew it. Just mosey on up to the in ether pick deposit, have the common ether pick, and use it to just give a deposit a good whack. Do let me know how you get on. Yeah, and you can also see that some side quests do not give experience. According to Car Caronel, I just heft the pick and give the ether a good whack. Alright, let's see what the common ether pick can do for us. Huh? Was that supposed to happen? Maybe it's malfunctioned. We should tell Car- Caranel and Nova. We should let Caranel and Nova. Thanks. Thanks for that. I have to say, I didn't expect it to break so easily. Though, right, give me, give it here for a minute. I see, I see. So the problem is durability. All right. Due to the high her ether density on the Bionis shoulder, it seems it's crystallize, it crystallizes into a form that's perfect for gems. Just reinforcing the pick isn't likely to improve the yield in practice. Thank, thank you all. This has been a valuable learning opportunity. I feel like I can take my research to the next level now. I want, I did want you to have the common ether pick as thanks, but now that it's broken, I won't really do. It won't really do, will it? Well, that's too bad. I'll just have to give you the the old retail model instead. Like I said, it's got its kinks, so it requires a trained hand. But it's better than nothing, right? You should be able to use it to harvest densely higher purity gems from all over the shoulder. Saves you time crafting. All right, while we do, you know, get zero experience, we do get the ether pick, which for some, I, I guess for some strange reason, the yep, it's gonna be obtaining gems from ether deposits. On the Bionis shoulder, you can use a tool called an ether pick to na mine natural gems from ether deposits, not just crystals. If you exhaust a given deposit, check back for a, after a while. Yeah, so you can actually get gems as well as uh, ether crystals from this. See, we got an art heals three, art heals two, and a damage heal three. So we can get gems. This is basically kind of the new way of like not having to worry about gem crafting because we basically just get new gems from this. Art using arts recovers twenty HP. Um, I'll go ahead and it's our lowest Melia. I'll go ahead and equip that to Melia for the time being. All right, what else can we do? Do we have more side quests? Yes, we do. We have one for Linar. Need something? If you do, well, I'm busy. Can it wait? Ah, uh, no, wait. I spoke too soon. Actually, I would like you to to ask you to perform some tasks for me. I would not normally reach out to strangers such as yourself, but there's a limit to what I can achieve myself. I've achieved request I've received requests for assistance from some of the younger companions, and I'd like to resolve their issues. They should not prove too difficult, yet the volume of work was high, so I was feeling quite harried. First, Gwyneth's request, which pertains to pl gathering plum wild grass. It has gotten rarer lately, hence the task of picking it is more taxing than once it was was. Second, Fedless' job is winnowing the praying caterpillar population. Or willowing the praying caterpillar population. These in turn grew more and more numerous until their numbers needed culling. Thirdly, the request from 
Loban, who was tasked with handling a number of noble brogs. Those critters have also been breeding too much for our liking, and need a little population control. Gather five lots of plump grass, wild grass, subdue three praying caterpiles, as well as two noble brogs. I would be grateful if you could undertake these three jobs for me, if it's not too much to ask, of course. Alright, we have Lenar's Worries. We have to complete the three quests, we get 30,000 experience for it. Very good then, I shall let you get the details from each of each mission from the concerned parties. Okay, so I need to find... Not you. Not you. Oh, wait. They're already in our quest log. Okay. Let's go ahead and check out the shop, actually. Because, yes, the shop is a little different. We have a few different, um... Few different things here. We have the official staff, which actually is pretty good for Melio. We have the seed blammer, which is actually good for Kino, and for Nene we have the madcap stopper. Obviously, just like always, Shulk's weapons don't uh, Shulk's weapons don't change. Uh, I don't really want to add late weight to my head. I think we're going to be okay for now. Uh, let's go ahead and buy all these weapons, though. Oh, I didn't realize that. Um... Oh, and not a Rex colored hood. Oh, the Rex hood. Okay, that's actually something for Shulk that he can wear. Oh, you can actually sell gems. I think you could sell gems in the last game, but I never bothered because I didn't need it. Um, hmm. Uh, I guess we're going to have to, like, equip these and then sell the others. Alright, let's go ahead and change our equipment around a little bit. Yeah, as you can see, you know, we got the Rex hood, which is just a hood that attaches to Shulk's, uh, checks to Shulk's outfit, which really, it's just the hood that he wears. Alright, let's go ahead and equip this. We'll re-equip that. Um, go ahead and, ooh, Seed Blaster, it looks like a, it looks like a Deku Seed. And then we'll equip... Oh, wait, I can't do that. Alright, hold on. You know, I'll go ahead and sell, sell the Rex Hood because I'm not going to be using it at all. Just don't have the money for uh, Nene's weapons, so we'll have to come back and do that when we get enough money. But as for that, that's going to be it for all of Companion Cave for the time being, because the side quests we have to do are out in the world. So, with that, next time on Xenoblade Chronicles Future Connected, we head out on into the Bionis shoulder to take care of some of these quests, as well as head in the direction of Alchemoth. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, make sure you give it a like, share it out a ton. Make sure to subscribe to Dibbly Dibbly if you have not already. And... I will see you guys all later.